Hi, I am Dr. Bahia Maroon, and I am really delighted to be with you today to share with you great data, great change, and how we can use great data to affect great change in the work that we do. I am the Chief Executive Officer at Polis Institute. Polis Institute is an engagement and research company that is dedicated to bringing together rich data and great people to create actually enduring shifts in economic and racial equity in the United States. In the course of doing that work, we have the opportunity to come alongside all different kinds of stakeholders who are likewise dedicated to building a better world. Today, I'm gonna to share with you a little bit of my own background, how I came to be doing this work and why I'm so passionate uh, about utilizing data to create really effective change in the world. And I also wanna share with you some insights on how you can think about the data that you're collecting at your own organizations in order to create more effective avenues for change and impact. So I grew up in the Northeastern United States. I started off in a small city as a child, and then I moved to a really big city uh, as a teenager. It's safe to say that from infancy to around 25, I lived a life as a Black American woman that was marked by having a lack of access to resources and a lack of access to really healthy support systems. But what I didn't lack was access to opportunities. And when I was 16, I got an opportunity to go to a program at Harvard University. At that program, I was able to achieve these really wonderful outcomes in my grades. And the important part of that story is what made it possible for me at 16 as an inner city youth in the United States, as a black child coming from a very under-resourced public school education, what made it possible for me to seize that opportunity at Harvard and to make something extraordinary out of it? And I can tell you that a huge part of what made it possible is the after-school programming that I was able to be part of. And because there were some really passionate and dedicated volunteers in my community, and there was a dedicated and passionate staff at a youth organization in my community, I was actually able to participate in ballet classes from the time that I was three years old uh, onward. And whereas in any other circumstances, those ballet classes would have cost quite a bit of money and they would have been out of reach for my family given our income. But because of the volunteers, I was able to go to those classes for free. And so were a number of other young girls in my community. And what those classes afforded me was access to understanding discipline to being able to follow directions, to learning the rules for something, and to having experiences with adults who showed up on my behalf, who genuinely cared about me and the things that happened to me in my life. So it might seem like an indirect line from an after-school ballet class to Harvard, but for me, I see a direct connection between that youth organization's um, drive to give us access to that kind of programming and other youth were in the basketball program, other youth were in the computer program, but all of us who had access to that 
after school time and those supportive adults really were being given the groundwork and the foundation for other kinds of pathways to success that we would go on to in our lives. So that's my experience with youth organizations, but I wanna share with you too, my experience as a parent with youth organizations. I was a single mom working full-time and going to college full-time when my son was in elementary school and middle school. And thankfully, my son had access to a youth development program that gave him all different kinds of wonderful programming. And most importantly, it gave me as a mom striving to create great opportunities for our household. It gave me access to knowing I could feel safe and comfortable about what my son was doing after school, that he was in a, a great environment with great people and that he was being well taken care of while also learning how to engage all different life skills that are going to help him along the course of his life later. And I can tell you that the outcome of both of those stories, my son's access to an after school program that cared and my access, the outcome of those stories is that I got to be able to complete a PhD in cultural anthropology. Um, my son, who is a bona fide adult now, uh, is a strong, secure, successful young man in his career. And those kinds of outcomes are made possible because of folks like all of you who are attending this conference, because of people like you who care about making a genuine difference in the lives of youth, the work that you're doing impacts the children who you serve, and it also impacts the families of those children. By learning how to make sure that at every step of the way, you are effectively gathering great data it's going to make it possible for you to take whatever impacts you're experiencing today and to exponentially amplify those impacts. I'm sure you've all heard uh, that saying, you know, if a tree falls in the forest and no one hears it, has it really fallen? And while we can ponder over those kinds of abstract questions, the reality for service programming is that if we don't measure what we're doing, we can't do what we're doing more effectively over time. If we don't measure what we're doing, we cannot know what areas of programming need to be dramatically improved, what areas of programming are incredibly successful and need to be expanded. If we don't effectively measure what we are doing, it's very difficult to explain to people who want to invest in our organizations why what we're doing is effective. What I like to tell people is that almost all organizations that are doing great work in the world have really good, feel good stories. These are anecdotes we can share about the people that we serve and the communities that we care about. But if you think about what it might be like to be an investor, a donor, a corporate sponsor, and you hear a hundred or a thousand or 10,000 really great feel good stories it's difficult to know which organization with those wonderful stories is the right organization to provide your donation to, your investment, your corporate sponsorship package. But if you have a thousand great stories and one organization that brings data to back that story up, I think you can see pretty clearly which of those thousand organizations is most likely to be able to receive additional funding from sponsors and donors. 
having data to go alongside the work that you do and the stories that you tell is the best way that you can grow your impact. So I wanna give you a very simple way to remember how to stay on course with your data. And that is G triple O, goals, objectives, outputs, and outcomes. G triple O, your organizational goal is a statement that comes alongside your mission and puts it into clear, actionable terms. So if your mission is to serve youth, the goal after you've served youth for 10 years is what? If your mission is to prove, improve the lives of children and their families, your goal of impact after 10 years is what? So you set your goal very clearly. And after you set your goal, you establish the objectives. You wanna make sure that your objectives are measurable and that they show you're moving up or you're moving down in a very clear way. For example, you might increase the rate of middle school or primary school graduation by 90%. You might decrease the rate of school dropouts by 20%. So it's an increase or a decrease and a clear number. These are your objectives. Your output is the set of data that I guarantee almost all of you watching and participating at this conference are already collecting. Your outputs are those very essential pieces of data about who is attending and how often. So an output may be 100 youth were served this month and 25 youth attended in week one, 25 youth in week two, and so on. An output is the clear and measurable quantitative data of what is happening because of what you're doing. So again, an output can be your attendance records, the number of programs you provide, the frequency of those programs. Those are your outputs. The outcome is what changed because of the output? What changed because those young people came to your program? So it's saying if we had 100 youth come to the program, of those youth, 85% show improvements in their grit, in their resilience. And we know that they showed improvements because when they came into the program, we gave them a resilience survey. And six months after being part of the program, we gave them another resilience survey. And during the six months that they participated, we tracked their output, meaning how frequently they attended and what activities they participated in. So when you're tracking your outputs, what are they doing? How often are they doing it? When you track your outputs and then you measure what's the impact of what they're doing, then you have your outcome. Your outcome is going to tie back directly to your objectives. When you take a G triple O approach, your goals, your objectives, outcomes, outputs and outcomes, when you take that approach, you set out a very clear and direct map for every single person in your organization to track why you're doing what you're doing, the goal, what's going to be the result of what you're doing, the objectives, 
how you know you're on track for all of your milestones, who you're serving, how often you're serving, and what they're doing, and what's the overall impact of them being part of your program, your outcomes. Using this approach is a guaranteed way to start collecting data that makes it possible for you to make more convincing cases for why others should be invested in the very important work that you do. You know, there's a sad part to the story about my own after school program, which is that the ballet classes didn't continue to be funded uh, long term. So while I was able to enjoy that benefit as a child, a child in the generation after me would not have been able to have that experience. And part of the reason that they weren't able to secure ongoing funding to continue to impact young people like myself is because they did great work but they never collected great data. So they might have known how many young people came to the class, but they didn't know how many of us were improving in our educational outcomes, or how many of us were increasing in our resiliency capacity, how many of us were having stronger social networks because of our time. Had that program measured its impacts, it's very likely they would have been able to show the importance of their work to more people to stay invested and to continue that important work on for generations to come. And that's the invitation that I make to every one of you today. When we do work in the social good sector as NGOs and nonprofits, the reality is, is that we're always on the ground, our time is overextended, um, there are so many challenges to just getting the great work done that it can often feel as if taking the time to collect data and to analyze data is a step too far, something we don't have time for. But think about this. Would you ever say that you don't have time for fundraising or you don't have time to keep your financial records? Would you ever say, I don't have time to serve the youth? Of course not. And likewise, it's absolutely essential to become a vibrant, vital organization in the 21st century that you see collecting great, accurate, transparent data as an activity that your organization's well being cannot do without. I hope that this short presentation today has inspired you just a bit to put data at the top of the work that you do so that you can share with people the numbers and the actual impact behind the wonderful work that you're doing to make our world a better place for every generation.